If you are looking for trustworthy pitchers tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball, you have come to the wrong slate because there aren't any. And not only are there no trustworthy pitchers, there are a lot of guys who we just kind of can't use primarily due to pitch count. So we're going to break down which guys you actually can consider for today, why or which ones we want to cross off. And the one guy who stands out, plus I think a good slate for stacking as the one consolation for tonight. Let's dig on in now and break all that down. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research here to break down Wednesday night's six game main slate with lock set for 6.40 p.m. Eastern for today. Again, lock is at 6.40 p.m. Eastern for tonight for this slate. So be sure to get those lineups in earlier than usual weather for tonight we have the uh a slight chance of rain in cleveland for the guardians and the dodgers i think they'll be good to play but worth checking back on that rain later on and also with that game it is 80 degrees humid and the wind is blowing out to center at 10 miles per hour so i would upgrade batters for the guardians and the dodgers as a result of that weather i think the over in that game is pretty interesting and uh Bats might not need the help there, at least on one side. So um, I think that'll be a good game as far as uh, the weather goes for today. Also worth noting, the second game of the Angels-Reds doubleheader is not on the main slate. So if you're worrying about that as far as timing of Linus being released, stuff like that, don't sweat it. That game is not in the slate, so uh, it is not of concern for us for tonight. We'll dive into the pitchers we can trust, the stacks I like, and much more all in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We recorded our PGA DFS preview for the Tour Championship, the final event of the FedEx Cup playoffs yesterday. That is up on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed via myself and Brennan Gadula. Broke down a unique format for that event, just a 30 golfer field and our favorite golfers in each salary tier over on FanDuel. Also worth noting, that is the free play for this week for FanDuel Research uh, is for the Tour Championship. If you want to get yourself entered in the free play, again, it's free. There are prizes to be had. What? more could you want go to fanduel.com slash research and check out the post it's on the main page uh on the like uh on the top part so you can find a link to the free play in there fanduel.com slash research for that get ready for the nfl season with incredible offers from fanduel america's number one sports book right now new customers can bet five dollars and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed plus all customers who bet five dollars will get 100 dollars off nfl sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in the Indiana. 1-800-522-4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland. Visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. Call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or 1-877-HOPE and Y or text HOPE and Y in New York. NFL Sunday ticket offer ends 9-18-23. No refunds. Terms and embargoes apply. $100 off NFL Sunday ticket, not YouTube TV. YouTube TV base plan required to watch YouTube TV. Redemption requires a Google account and current from a payment. Commercial use excluded. Let's dig in now to the pitching preview here for this Wednesday main slate. We find Kevin Gosman at the top. His salary is eleven thousand dollars. Followed by Clayton Kershaw at ten eight. Charlie Morton coming off a big game at home. It's ten thousand. Aaron Savali with his new team ninety seven. We got Chris Sale at ninety three with Mackenzie Gore, Jack Flaherty, and Jose Quintana as the others at eight thousand dollars or higher. 
Now, a lot of those names on that list are guys with bad pitch counts for tonight. We're going to go through those and things to watch, and it's going to have a major ripple effect on this slate. As far as the guys we can trust tonight go, Kevin Gosman has a lot of flaws. He has a tough matchup with the Orioles. He is on the road. He still lets up a lot of hard contact. And despite that, I think that Gosman is and has to be the top pitcher on our list for tonight. Now, the Orioles, again, tough matchup. 105 WRC plus against righties on the current active roster. And their strikeout rate is lower than you'd want it to be. It does help that they've seen Gosman just twice this year, despite being a divisional team. One of those was August 3rd, so somewhat recent. And then the other one was back in May. They did get to him in the more recent one. He went just four in the third innings and allowed three earned runs. And that was not a great showing for Gosman, but it's a bit more of a blip because Gosman's been throwing more sliders his past 12 starts. And he does a 3.76 ERA in that time. It's not perfect, but... His skill interactive ERA is 3.35. He has a 30% strikeout rate. He's had 12 plus strikeouts twice and has had nine in two others. I don't think there's anybody on the slate who can match Gosman's upside. And I think that honestly, the median expectation for Gosman is also much higher. Even with Gosman being, again, a very flawed pitcher, I have him projected for 7.1 strikeouts tonight. Nobody else for me tops six. So... Gosman is a top guy, even if it is a bit uneasy to go at someone in a tough matchup on the road who does let up hard contact. I still think Kevin Gosman deserves to be number one on our list for tonight. After him, there is a pretty big fall off where I don't really want to go at anybody. I'm going to put Charlie Morton second, really more out of obligation than anything. His salary is 10000 which is more than I want to pay for him, given his inconsistencies, but he does have upside and he'll have a full leash. And again, That matters a lot for tonight. Morton's facing the Mets. They're a low strikeout offense, and they're broadly still a good team against righties of the 116 WRC+. Entering last week, Morton was in a pretty big rut. His walks were way up. He was not getting many strikeouts, but in that game, he had 10 strikeouts across six shutout innings. Came against the Yankees, so a much better matchup than this one, but uh, he had eight strikeouts a couple starts before that as well. So Morton can have pop games, and they're more likely to come at home which is where he's at today. The strike area for Morton is five percentage points higher at home than it is on the road. I do still worry about the walks. I worry about the matchup here. And those concerns are enough for honestly, I might not get to Morton tonight, despite the fact he is my number two stud uh, for today. So Morton is number two. He is ranked there. That does not mean I will get to him. Might just go all Gosman, honestly. Um, But Morton does at least have upside, which is more than a lot of the studs for tonight can't say. For a value play, I'm going to go Jack Flaherty. He's at home against the Blue Jays, meaning he is facing Kevin Gosman. And the Jays' offense is still pretty good. Uh, but I like the length for Flaherty. Flaherty has made three starts for the Orioles. He has gone 92, 98, and 84 pitches. The 84 pitch outing was because he struggled, got bounced early. But broadly, Flaherty's been okay. He's been using more sliders his past 11 starts. And his skill interactive ERA is 4.56, which is not ideal. But... He's getting some ground balls, getting some strikeouts. And again, the pitch count is there. Flaherty has also made seven of those 11 starts on the road. And he's at home for tonight. He did have an eight strikeout game against the Astros in his first home start at Camden Yard. So pitched really well there. I've got Flaherty projected for 5.3 strikeouts tonight. That's not a big number at all. But on this slate, given pitch count concerns, it is at least somewhat competitive. So I'm probably more likely to use Flaherty than Morton just because Flaherty saves me $1,400. So I don't know. I think hopefully you can tell from the vibe that I am not into pitching tonight outside of Kevin Gosman. So I think I'm just going to build around Gosman and figure it out from there. Luckily, I can build around Gosman because the primary stacks, although they're like high profile teams, all have key value plays we can turn to. So we're going to try to highlight those in the stacking section in order to allow ourselves to get to these fun teams while still using Gosman as a pitcher. That begins with the Dodgers. Uh, they are facing Xavier Curry tonight. And as mentioned, the weather, very good for hitting Curry has appeared in eight games since he made his first start. And it's a decently large sample. His ERA in that time is 3.58, but it comes with a 5.51 skill interactive ERA. A lot of times, as we've discussed, when you see a gap between ERA and skill interactive ERA, it's because a player is not letting up hard contact. That is not the case here. Curry is actually letting up a 45% hard hit rate with a 53% fly ball rate. 
So it's going to be hard to keep that ERA low with numbers like that. Strikeout rate also low for Curry at 18%. He's benefited from a good number of plus matchups, but when he was facing the Rays, tougher matchup, he let up five runs in five innings. That's the one quality team where we've seen Curry get a full start. The Dodgers, obviously a very good offense, 110 WRC plus against righties with a 183 ISO. That is the second toughest offense he has faced thus far. I think the Dodgers will be able to get to Curry here. So to me, they are easily the top stack. They're not as far ahead of the pack as uh, the as Gosman is a pitcher, but I think the Dodgers pretty much in a tier of their own as far as stacking for tonight. I think James Outman is starting to trend back up. He could be one of those guys along with Jason Hayward, maybe David Peralta. He can be a value play on this team. Outman obviously got off to that crazy hot start, but then he honestly became unusable in DFS for a long stretch. Wasn't starting part of the reason, but like was not playing well either. But since the all-star break, Outman has an 11% barrel rate. His strikeout rate is back down to 26%. He's drawing a ton of walks. So he's seeing the ball well, and he can run a bit too. Uh, unfortunately, he's not facing Noah Syndergaard, which makes running a lot easier, but still, you know, we'll take it. Salary for Outman is $2,900. I am very okay with him for tonight. I think that using him alongside Hayward should make it pretty easy to get to Max Muncy, maybe Mookie Betts as well, while using Kevin Gosman as your pitcher for tonight. Number two stack is the Braves, and they're facing Jose Quintana. Quintana is doing a great job of suppressing hard contact, and I think he can keep that up. So I would not stack most teams against Quintana in his current state. But most teams don't have a 131 WRC plus and a 237 ISO against lefties this year, which is what the Braves have. So that does change the equation quite a bit. Quintana's up to six starts this year, and he's doing a lot of the stuff that made him successful last year as well. His ERA is 3.03 as a result, and that's all great. He is living very dangerously, though, because Quintana is letting up a ton of balls in play. He has a 17% strikeout rate with an 8.8% swinging strike rate. He needs that hard contact number to be kind of like an outlier in terms of how low it is in order to get by. Now, it could stay there, but this will be a major test. It is risky to stack the Braves, riskier than usual at least, just because of the matchup, but I do still think they're worth it here. So the Braves, to me, the number two stack behind the Dodgers. Now, the last time the Braves faced a lefty, they had Kevin Pillar bat seventh. Because of Pillar's defense and how good it is, he does play the entire game when he starts. Pillar has a 213 ISO against lefties so far this year. He has a 36% fly ball rate, so he's not perfect, but he's $2,100. I am very willing to use him if it allows me to jam in, you know, again, the studs. Same thing with Von Grissom, $2,200. Does have some speed, obviously. Power is not perfect, but facing the lefty should help him too. So Pilar and, and Grissom, both guys, I'm okay using within my Braves stacks for tonight. Third stack is the Rays. They're facing Austin Gomber. And we discussed this last week, but I like the strides Gomber has made throughout this year. I still think he's much better now than what he was earlier on this year. But I don't mind stacking a team as good as the race against him despite that. The big shift for Gomber seemed to happen when he upped his slider usage, and he's been doing that now for his past 14 starts. And his ERA in the time is 4.48. Considering half those starts have come at Coors Field, that's a pretty impressive number. Just not sure how sticky it is because Gomber is still letting up, uh, is still getting just a 15% strikeout rate. His hard hit rate allowed is 44% with a 38% fly ball rate. That combination of numbers doesn't typically result in a lower ERA super often. The thing about Gomber is he's not making mistakes. His barrel rate allowed is 8%, and he has not let up multiple barrels in a game since June 25th. So that's how he's kept things from being worse. And that's a credit to him because mistakes are avoiding mistakes is a skill. But we can still get good games from teams that are facing him. The Rays. Diminished team from what they were before. Their active roster is WRC plus against lefties is down to 113, but that's still good enough to use them for stacking. So the Rays to me belong third on this list behind the Dodgers and the Braves. And I would put the Braves above the Rays in large part because of Park, uh, but also respect to Gomber as well. In this roster, I'm happy to be high on Jose Siri. He had fifth against the lefty last night, though he was eighth in the uh, game before that. Siri is striking out a ton, which is annoying because it means fewer balls in play. But 
Gomber doesn't get a lot of strikeouts. That's less of a factor here. ISO for Siri is still very high. So as long as he makes contact, he can do damage. And he's more likely to do contact here. So as far as mid-range plays go, I think Siri makes a lot of sense here. $3,100 is his salary. Obviously not like a value play at that number, but Isak Paredes also in the mid-range at $3,100 as well. You can go down to Curtis Mead at $2,200, save some salary. Across the Dodgers, Braves, and Rays, you can find guys with upside with lower salaries, and that does give me more confidence I can get to Gosman tonight without totally handcuffing myself at stacking. Let's go to things to watch and run through the biggest pitch count concerns for tonight, just so you kind of know the red flags on this slate. The two big ones are Clayton Kershaw and Chris Sale. Kershaw has gone 67 and 72 pitches in his first two starts back, so I can't see him going longer than 80 tonight. And that's 80 pitches against a Guardians offense that never strikes out. So that pushes Kershaw out of play for me. Sale has gone 58 and 65 pitches in his first two starts back, and his velocity was awful last time out, like down about three miles per hour from what it typically is. So I'm not going to touch him, and I would consider stacking against him with the Astros at times in tournaments just because of how concerning the velo was in that game. Final guy here is Jose Urquidy. He has looked good since the return, but I have no idea on his pitch count. His max so far is 80. So all three to me of Kershaw, Sale, and Urquidy are out due to pitch count concerns. And for Sale, I'd at least consider stacking against him because of the low velo his last time out. Finally, Luis Severino is on the mound tonight. He's still pretty shaky, letting up a lot of hard contact, but He's facing the Nationals. The Nationals have an 87 WRC plus against righties. So I think the Nationals are fine for one-offs. If you want, if you find some guys with upside, they do have guys uh, who can do that there. Um, CJ Abrams' salary is still $3,000. Lane Thomas, 34. So you can potentially get some, some one-offs on this team, uh, but harder to get to a full stack just because there are not a lot of guys I want to use in that lineup. Let's finish up. Here are some dinger calls for today. The boring one, Max Muncy. Uh, he's a lefty in Cleveland, facing off against Scott, laying up a lot of hard contact, a lot of fly balls. And Max Muncy knows a thing or two about dingers. So Max Muncy, the boring and run call for tonight. The fun one, let's go Jose Siri. Mentioned before that when he makes contact, good things tend to happen. And he's more likely to make contact tonight against Gomber than he is against most guys. So Siri... Hoping he gets back on track. Think he's a good option for tonight. So home run calls for today, Max Muncy and Jose Siri. That is all that we have here for today for the solo shot. As mentioned, though, our PGA DFS preview is posted in the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed. So go find that wherever you get your podcast to check out the stuff for the tour championship. And again, don't forget the free roll over on FanDuel Research, FanDuel.com slash research to find the link for the free roll for this week's tour championship. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the or follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in. Good luck to you with your lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to preview Thursday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.